Hey guys, what is up? Shadowlands back for another review. Today I'm going to be doing another newly released weapon by Nexon, the LR300ML. Uh, I think I may actually accidentally up this on, upload this on YouTube about uh, and leave off the ML part because I've gotten so used to calling it ML uh, without the ML, just the LR300. I think a lot of people have gotten used to that, but there is an ML at the end, so if I forget to put that up, uh, poke me or something, and I will fix that. So I might forget to do that at first. Anyway, so I'm going to go right off to the stats. Damage of 40, portability of 62, rate of fire of 74, accuracy of 81, and recoil of 66. Now right off the bat, this sounds like a fantastic diddlyistic assault rifle and one that everyone would want to buy. It's not an assault rifle. Well, technically it is, but it doesn't behave like one. It behaves like an SMG because A, you can't put a scope on it, B, it has a very high rate of fire, C, it has a very high accuracy, which means very low spread when jumping. It's actually smaller than a P90TR, I've tested that already has a very small spread, so you're going to have mixed feelings. If you're expecting an assault rifle, you're going to be sorely disappointed. If you know what you're expecting and you still want to get it, then you might enjoy it. Personally, I hate this weapon. I hate this weapon so much, I will never touch it again. I'm considering selling it back just because it's so awful. It's just god-awful. I was expecting an assault rifle. When I first saw it, I was like, oh, well, the stats look good. I might be able to put, if I put, uh, I just put, like, you know, one of my new scopes on this. I just bought two new scopes. Um, I will just pop one of those on there and see what happens after that. And I was like, wow, I can't put a scope on it. However, you can put a suppressor on it and an extended magazine. So if you were to put an S1 suppressor on this, or an S3 to reduce recoil or flash, then you might have a little bit better luck with this gun. But the thing is, the one thing I hate the most about this gun is that it also retains another trait of an SMG. The damage drop-off is god-awful. It is horrible. The damage drop-off on this gun is just downright horrendous. At, across the two houses, which is not even the maximum range of this assault rifle, uh, from rooftop to rooftop, it does maybe 20 to 25 damage. That's horrible! Most assault rifles would still be doing upwards of 30. I tested this in-game a couple of times before I did this actual gameplay, and you'll see some oil rig gameplay later. I actually don't do half bad on the Costa Recon gameplay. I make the gun look pretty good. But don't take that for granted. I had a very good game, and doing the exact same kind of thing on oil rig and also you can ignore the fact that I get two ultra kills in a row. Um, it's absolutely horrendous. This gun is terrible. Anyone who buys it, you better know what you're getting into first. And I really hope you watch this review before you buy the gun. Because it's absolutely terrible. I cannot think of a worse weapon that Combat Arms could possibly have released. The new sniper they put out is absolutely amazing. I love it. It's basically another KNT, except it has a couple of different traits that set it, set it aside from the KNT. So I really appreciate that. And it's a really, really nice weapon. But this gun is terrible. I don't know what crack they were smoking when they made this gun, but it's just not even a real weapon. It's similar to the L85A1, not the mod, because it has the scope on it. This gun does not have a scope, neither does the L85. So if you were already skilled with the L85 or the QBZ, and you were like, and you like those weapons, then this weapon might actually be all right with you because I'm really thinking that they will fix the damage and how badly it's nerfed. I really hope they fix that. If they don't, I will honestly be surprised. They've been fixing a lot of weapons recently, uh, balancing them out, and I think they'll realize pretty quickly that this weapon is not very well balanced. But one thing that I don't understand is why would you not want to put a scope on an assault rifle? Why would they say you can't? On top of that, if you look closely at the gun, it actually has an RAS system on it. That stands for Rail Attachment System. If you see that thing, that if, okay, if you look at where the little thing sticks up midway through the top of the gun, that thing behind it, those little, like, grooves, that is a rail attachment system. That is what the scopes attach to. So why can't we put a scope on this? And also, one thing, speaking of scope positioning, um, they said in the update that they fixed some, like, positions of scopes on guns, so they uh, make sense now. I think they might have been doing that entirely for the sole purpose of the M4A1 CQBR. I haven't actually tried looking at where they put the new scope on it, um, but I think they may have changed the positioning on that because there were a couple of guns where the positioning of the scope just didn't make any sense, like the T2 or the M4A1 CQBR. The positioning of the scope was blocked off as to where you couldn't actually even use the scope in real life. So I think they may have gone through and fixed some of those because they said they did in the uh, bug fix updates a few days before the sale began. So I'm thinking that may have been one of the things. Also, for all of you who are wondering, the reason we've been lagging a lot recently is because people are updating the game, buying lots of cases, opening lots of cases, and buying lots of things from the shop. That's a huge strain on the Nexon servers, guys, so you really can't blame them. Theoretically, you have to blame us, 
because they're providing the same servers they've always provided, which aren't actually half bad. I know we talk a lot of trash about them in-game, and there are times when Nexon derps, but still, I mean, it's not all their fault. For the most part, they have excellent servers. Um, we just overload them sometimes. And also, there's the usual hacker updates. I've already seen a couple of OPKers and, you know, the usual stuff, spammers. I've seen lots of spammers, actually. Spam spammers are by far the worst right now. I'm not so worried about chammers or aimbotters anymore. That's pretty rare, actually. I haven't seen as many of those recently, but what I've seen tons of is spammers. And spammers annoy me so much. All they serve is to slow down the server and to uh, advertise hack websites. So all in all, guys, you really can't blame Nexon for that. Another thing I'd like to point out about the gun, just real fast, um, is that, well, it's on for $25 for the normal price of a assault rifle, but for the sale, I do believe it's at 20 So just, I'm, I'm saying that, guys, but I really... I feel sorry for anyone who buys this weapon, who goes against what I'm saying, because I know what I'm saying. I've tried this gun, I've attempted to play games with it, and it's just trash. These two games you're seeing here are the two best games I had out of over 50 matches I recorded with this weapon. These are the two best, and they're not even particularly fantastic, except for the very, very ending of the oil rig gameplay. I get two ultra kills in a row. That's pretty lucky, to be honest, and uh, I think it was literally sheer luck that let me get that. That's the reason they call me Sherlock Holmes, but anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm so special. Anyway, so the actual description of the gun says, A conversion of the M16, its internal structure has been modified so that it has a folding stock that can be attached while keeping the basic functions of the rifle still intact. That's what the arsenal apparently says, but anyway, the arsenal no, no longer really exists, so here's the first ultra kill right here, and then I'm about to grab another one without dying, so that's going to be pretty neat. I'm just going to kind of stay quiet and watch this myself. I kind of I kind of want to see what I actually did. The first one was pretty lucky. I just got that headshot. If I didn't get that headshot on the multi, that would have uh, been pretty good. But if you see at close range, I had to pour at least five shots into those people. Like, actual five hits. And I also got that there. And I could have probably gotten a Fantastic if I had more ammo, but I guess that didn't really happen. If I probably should have crouched there, too. But... Just saying. So this gun's not very good, guys. I wouldn't buy it. It'll be lucky to score a 5. It's probably going to score like a 4.5 or a 5, maybe. I really don't think I'm going to score it very much above that. If you're looking... Like, they recently released all the SMGs that behave like assault rifles, like the CZ Scorpion and so on. I guess they're releasing an assault rifle that behaves like an SMG to have the other way around. But Anyway, thank you guys for watching this review. Please rate, comment, subscribe. I have a lot of videos coming out this next week. I know the... Uh, Thanksgiving week was kind of short on videos, but next week we will have tons of videos that have been recording this week. So I will see you guys in the next video. Shadowlands out. And that one, given the intelligence of the people who watch this show, this is probably a good thing to teach. Because my guess is when they're not trying to operate heavy machinery with their butt cheeks, they're probably trying to do something stupid like this. I mean, what else could you possibly teach that would be as stupid as that? Even you can learn something from a sloth. Fuck this shit!